At Waldo Pizza, they may start with the flour for a perfect pie. About three to four hundred. But it's so much more than making dough. Even when you have all the right ingredients, any way you slice it, you need enough staff to serve it. It's just a continuing battle. Here, they're so low on staff, they decided to close on Tuesdays, and it's been that way since March. We'll go through about 100 applications and maybe get four people to work here, and we're lucky if all four of them stay a month. Another sign of the times with this sign on the door in Grandview. Housewife closed for the day because of staffing shortages. In just a few minutes, we watched customer after customer come up sad to see the news. I thought it was over with. I had no idea that they still was having an issue with staffing people. Kind of seen this a couple of other places before, so we're not totally shocked. We talked to several Kansas City restaurants like Waldo Pizza, who say staffing is their biggest challenge right now. We're going to talk to servers past and present, diners, the Greater Kansas City Restaurant Association, and a restaurant owner trying to make it work. Less table service, more quick delivery. Bill Teal with the Greater Kansas City Restaurant Association says those are just a few of the permanent changes we could see while he says Kansas City area restaurants struggle to hire enough staff. Staffing is still the number one issue and a lot of managers are having to to work twice as hard. Managers are you know, having to sometimes wash dishes and bus tables. The Bureau of Labor Statistics shows that food services and drinking places did add 74,000 jobs across the U.S. in July, and that builds on several months of improvement, but that is still 635,000 jobs lower than February 2020. Their data shows leisure and hospitality has regained 7 million jobs since April 2020, but it's still down 1.2 million since February 2020, leaving more ground to make up than several other industries they track. I've heard kind of anecdotally that, that a lot of uh, restaurant workers have moved into the construction business. So it's, it's difficult and it's slow to get better. At Sayachi in Brookside, you'll find sushi delicately made by a skilled sushi chef who doesn't hand it to a food runner, but puts that sushi on a talking robot to deliver to diners. Excuse me. Excuse me. I have to go there. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Owner Carlos Falcone admits it was an investment, but one he says is paying off in his staffing struggles. His biggest issue at Sayachi and his Hirocho restaurants. Take me back to, I guess, March of 2020. You have three restaurants open, and how many people are working for you at that point? Yes, I, I mean, I will say probably about like close to 50. Right now we're running the places with, I will say, four, 20 maybe at the most. Less than half. Yes, less than half. He has been able to hire just a few folks for his three restaurants in the weeks since we've talked, but still, to keep things running, he's been jumping in to serve or wash dishes. He cut back restaurant hours, closing certain days, and says he's trying to offer employees more balance. But a lot of people want to do a career out of this. And uh, so for those people, we're able to provide uh, like insurance uh, and uh, like 401k and things like that. Your map is ready. And his food running robot. It gives them more freedom. Freedom, he says, to run a smaller staff, even on busy nights. Servers can take more tables with the robot's help and hopefully then make more money. Are you at a sustainable place with your restaurants? Yes and no. Um, yes, um, for a week or two, for a month, but after that, it's like there's always, there's still the shifting. How's your spicy tuna today? One of his servers, Tyler Smith, just came back to restaurant work this year after leaving just a few months into the pandemic. Just anxiety, wanted to get away from it all. While he enjoys serving, he did love his nine to five schedule, but for him? It came down to just money's better serving and bartending. I'd be surprised in the next five, 10 years if I was still doing it. As far as working with the robot, he doesn't mind. It's filling a gap. 100%. Everyone's looking. I, I don't know of a single place that's comfortable in their staffing right now. This teacher said she left her second job as a server a few months before the pandemic began. It was just taking a lot of time away from my kids. I was working late at night, and so I just decided not worth it anymore. I honestly, my husband and I have talked about this. We're like, where 
where are these people going that are quitting? An associate professor at Park University told us our tight labor market makes stiff competition for employees. People have more choices and maybe taking jobs with different hours or better pay or going back to school. And these diners who haven't been back dining long. Yeah. But to actually enjoy and have like a true date? Just, it's been a just few since months. New Year, yeah. I would say say they've had great service but do notice a difference. Longer wait times because yeah. there's more takeout. I think people yeah. uh, are very short fused. When Mitchell goes out, she still sees it through a server's eyes. If you're paying attention, you can tell that waiters and servers are serving multiple tables, maybe not even in their own section. What do you want people to know when they go out to eat right now? Anywhere. Just be kind. Yeah, just be kind.